Hello there. So, movie Die Hard. It's a Christmas movie about a man who basically needs to reconcile with his family. He's a cop from New York. He has been stubborn, refusing to accept his his wife's line of work, refusing to acknowledge everything. You know, in these Christmas movies, it's typical that a guy is, seems to be stubborn and then has to learn a lesson. As the movie goes on, he learns that the primary, it, what matters most is being with his family. What matters most is him acknowledging that his wife is successful, him acknowledging and being supportive. That is what the key factor is. That is what he learns in the movie. Everything else in this movie is just tacked on to make it action-packed and exciting. So, as he's going through this Christmas story, um, these people, these thieves, try take over a tower trying to rob it of $600 million. And him being a cop and just being in the wrong place at the wrong time starts taking each and every one of them out as everyone no one's refu everyone's refusing to work with him properly the cops down on the ground are not acknowledging him and what he's saying as valuable information they refuse to listen to him many officers die all this stuff is tacked on all that is a side story to the christmas movie that it is but it's such an awesome side story. Alec Rickman, uh, amazing, amazing actor. The fact that this is his first role is mind-boggling, honestly. But Alan Rickman does an amazing job as Hans Gruber. This is an absolutely spectacular film because here he embodies like the the evil type of dude. Like he changes roles incredibly well. Like when everything is going his way, he's all proper. He's all, uh, you know. He seems elegant, and as things start to fall apart around him, he slowly starts to get a little more aggravated with those around him until he finally finds out who uh, the officer's wife is, and he takes her hostage, and he's, like, snapped. He's, like, they have the scene where he's crawling on the ground to tell Holly Gennaro, just like, I've moved up to kidnapping, so don't insult me. All this stuff is just so well done. And, and I know a lot of people say this isn't a Christmas movie, but it is. Every Christmas movie, at its heart, has to do with a go has to be with a man. Occasionally a woman, but I can't think of any, has to do with a man whose heart grows two times its size or who realizes that greed isn't what the world is about it's about giving it's about sharing it's about accepting others around them so in the end this is a christmas movie that takes place literally on christmas eve they just have this action-packed sequence around it which is good <laughs> It makes it so interesting, so much fun to watch. And this movie is very, very basic in its storytelling. Like, absolutely basic. Like, at the very beginning, John McClane is flying in on a plane, and he doesn't like flight. And the guy uh, sitting next to him basically tells him, you know, the best way to cure flight sickness or flight travel or whatever it is, the uncomfort of it, is take off your shoes and socks and make fists with your toes. Lo and behold, he's barefoot the entire movie. Another scene at the very beginning was they talked about the Rolex watch that Holly Gennaro was given as a gift. Lo and behold, it becomes a key factor later on. It's like everything is seated, talked about, and referenced so well that it just becomes a little over, a little ridiculous, but at the same time, it's so well done. The only thing I found interesting is like you have a Christmas movie, all right. You have an action movie, all right. When it introduces the zombie, I found it a little weird. And if you're saying that there are no zombies in this movie, you're absolutely wrong. We have there's this character named Carl whose brother is uh, is one of the the bad guys who's taken out by John McClane, and he is hung. The last time we see him, he is left hanging by the throat by chains for several minutes by the throat in, in at the very top of the skyscraper, which blows up. At the very end of the movie, he apparently survived the fall to the ground, is able to get up from underneath a tarp, and pulls out a gun to shoot at John McClane. The only way he's taken down is because he gets two shots to the chest, one to the head, I think, if I saw it properly. But yeah, they had to take out the zombie, and he was a zombie. There's no other way you can justify how he got from the, the what, 35th floor, the 36th floor, all the way down to ground level, quicker than everyone who's evacuating the building, mind you, when he was left hanging by a chain by his neck up there. Other than that, everything else is <laughs> so absolutely entertaining. I love Hans Gruber. He's an absolutely amazing villain. You can't 
help but enjoy him. You can't help but like him. I kind of wish he he did get it all. I kind of wish he succeeded. Of course, he would have ended up taking out 30 some odd innocent civilians to to succeed. But he's just a likable guy. He's very uh what is it? Charismatic. Very charismatic. The way he's talking with Takagi in the beginning. It seems so great because he's like talking about Takagi's suits. He's talking about just uh, models, the models they're building. He talks about all this stuff. And then he starts asking him, just like, okay, I need your code. I need your code. That's a really nice suit. I'd hate to ruin it. Just like, oh my gosh. The way he's able to just, he, he knows his job. He's there to do it. And he doesn't care how much blood is shed. The John McClane, all these characters are very like one, one note, but... It's Hans Gruber that really does carry the story, the, the side story that is the, the action-packed sequences, because he transitions as the film goes on from being the charismatic, likable guy in the beginning, going all the way to just crawling on the ground because everything's getting taken out of his control because he likes control. He's one of those people that needs to... He, he's an eight-type personality. If nothing's... If it's not being done correctly, he, he starts to get unraveled. And I like that. I like seeing him get unraveled. John McClane is there just being the guy who's a, a, a normal dude. He's just an officer. He's not a special agent. He's not trained for all this kind of stuff. He's just a cop. Just a cop who's thrown into this situation. He was there for the Christmas story that was reconciling with his family. Yet all this stuff happened. <laughs> Which is funny. It's just like it deep down, deep down, it is a Christmas movie. And I know so many people argue about this, but if you look at John McClane's character and Christmas movies in general, they're normally a, like a simple, simple, ri simply written character who have a transitional moment near the end where they realize they were wrong and what the the true meaning of Christmas is. Sure, he doesn't say the true meaning of Christmas, but he realizes that. He just needed to support his wife. He just needed to be with his family. It, it, he has his Christmas moment. He has his Christmas moment. <laughs> Which is what makes it great as a Christmas movie. Because you're given all this stuff going on. Explosions. You're given this action-packed sequences. You have John McClane pulling glass out of his foot when he realizes what really matters. <laughs> Yeah, but definitely, definitely, if it's not on your Christmas watch list, it has to be. It has to be. It's one of those that needs to be seen, like, every year, if not every other year. Because it's just quintessential Christmas. Yet just add on uh, a theft that's going on at the same time. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Toodles.